Hey everyone, Peter's man coming at ya. In our last video, we took a look at the high level architecture for play to earn games. So going from client to server to the blockchain. And I briefly touched on this concept of a marketplace in that video. So I wanted to dive a little bit deeper into that uh, as part of this video, because the marketplace, of course, I think is a key component of the play to earn ecosystem and GameFi in general as really another means to monetization for game developers. And I think honestly, a much healthier way to monetize your games where you have a very nice incentive structure wherein I create a marketplace. So like, let's take Axie Infinity as an example. They have a marketplace and for every transaction that happens on that marketplace, they charge a royalty. I believe, uh, at least when I was looking at it, it was around 4%. And that means that the developers are incentivized to create a healthy ecosystem where people are encouraged to transfer their assets. The more that those assets are transferred and the more the community grows and is engaged, the more developers earn, which allows them to create more features, which in turn incentivizes more uh, usability of assets that could be on the marketplace. So you got a very nice, healthy feedback loop that happens through that. So in this video, I just wanted to briefly talk about one, what is the marketplace, which we just described, two, architecturally, how that fits into your game, and three, I wanted to actually walk through a specific example of one that's open sourced, uh, thanks to Morales. And eventually I want to integrate the marketplace functionality into our crypto APIs. Look forward to that in probably a couple months from now. I think there, there should be some updates there. And I, at the end of the day, I do want to make that easier for more game developers, which I am really excited to share when that's ready. If you have any questions, definitely let me know down in the comments below or head over to our Discord and feel free to reach out there as well. I personally love chatting with all of you over on Discord and seeing what you're building. I think that's really exciting as new ideas are kind of flowing into this space and there's definitely just constantly so much to continually keep learning. So we addressed what is the marketplace? How does that fit into GameFi and play to earn games? But architecturally, how does this work? Typically, so if we're again, taking a look at the Axie Infinity example, the way this works is that you have a web page that you go through. So say marketplace.axieinfinity.com. On that website, you're going to see a list of a bunch of tokens that have been listed for sale. You have the ability to purchase those tokens and that is all done through your authentication with your wallet. Then you have that functionality to write to the blockchain by calling different functions like sell, purchase, or transact or whatever the given functionality is. That functionality has to be exposed to you through a smart contract. That smart contract is not gonna be the same as the NFT smart contract. It's gonna host and live as its own kind of independent smart contract and entity. But when you call it, it's of course going to then interact with other smart contracts that would exist on the blockchain. So it's kind of an example of being able to talk and intercommunicate between smart contracts, which is, I think, incredibly important as generally speaking, blockchain and Web3 continue to grow. You're going to have a lot of smart contracts talking to smart contracts. From a design perspective, I think one of the nice things about this concept, as we touched briefly from, from an economic standpoint, it's important, but I think as, as a game developer, you want to make sure that this ecosystem around your marketplace is healthy and players really want to engage with the marketplace because at the end of the day, a player owns an NFT and they don't have to actually use your marketplace. They can, of course, always go to other uh, assets or, or marketplaces that are out there, such as, say, an OpenSea and do the transfer. But then you, you want to be able to provide enough incentive and, and really that, that comes from having a budding ecosystem so that players are engaging with you, which then in turn creates royalties, which then in turn allows you to continually monetize your game and provide that nice healthy feedback loop. Uh, but you should never really be trying to limit a player to your marketplace because I think that at the end of the day, if you're trying to do that, then I don't think there's a reason for you to be working with NFTs in the first place because you could just do that functionality yourself. But the, the point is to really enable ownership for the players and being able to allow them to take assets, especially assets that you might want them to integrate into other games, 
and then create a giant ecosystem around that. That's at least kind of, I think, the, the metaverse vision. So hopefully architecturally that makes sense and let's kind of walk through an example right now. So this is an example from Morales, uh, from their specifically their video around cloning OpenSea. They touch briefly on the contract around the 44 minute mark. So if you want a little bit more context in the context of that video, you can, you can check it out there, but kind of does just a very quick summary of the smart contract and doesn't dive into a lot of specifics. I want to dive like one layer deeper for, for the context of this video. So you can find the asset on the Ethereum NFT marketplace boilerplate, and that's located under source contracts, marketplace boilerplate dot soul. So it's a solidity contract. There are three key functions here that we're going to be taking a look at that are included with this boilerplate. So you have a create market item. So that is basically responsible for listing an item on the marketplace. You have a sale of an item. So being able to actually purchase an item and then just a standard function that's read only to actually fetch all of the items that are for sale. And if you want a different example of this, he actually credits a, another marketplace that you could take a look at. So if you want to dive down the rabbit hole of other open source projects, you could do that as well. As a boilerplate, I think there's a lot of functionality that you would want to extend into what is currently implemented, but this serves as I think a great teaching tool to actually understand how you would want to inter interface with, with marketplaces. So as a result, as being part of a boilerplate, it's only working with the 721 standard. As you know, on the channel, we work with the 1155 pretty often, and that's what I would recommend. But uh, as a result, if you want that functionality, you're going to have to add that in here. Like I said, I eventually kind of want to abstract that away through the crypto APIs, but in the current set of tooling that we have, if you really want to get your hands started with Ethereum and Solidity, this is how you do it. They have a bunch of infrastructure really is how I would describe it at the top here. So you have a concept of a market item, which captures the NFT contract and item IDs that are associated with, with that item. You have when an item is created, when an item is sold, uh, as various different events that could be triggered. And then the nice part about events, of course, is that they can be read off of the actual blockchain itself. So it gives you a nice log of all of the different actions that have taken place with your, your smart contract. So looking at the function specifically, right? So you have this fetch market items. There's not some anything too crazy going on there. All it's doing is looking at the list of unsold items that are market items, wrapping that as an array and then returning that. And because it's a read only function, there's no costs associated with that. So it's pretty nice in that regard as just reading the state and being able to display that on the website. The other two functions here are create market item. So listing an item for sale and then actually transacting on, on that item and, and selling it. The key thing to note is that they are payable functions, which means that when you're listing an item for sale, you're going to be transacting in the native currency. If you don't want to do that, there are of course other options. So if you want to use like ERC twenties, you could do that, but anything that requires the ability to actually transact with a, the native currency of the blockchain is required to call that function payable. And that allows you to then take a portion of the ETH from a user and, and actually integrate that into a payment scheme of some degree. So that's what's happening here is you're listing an item and you're setting the price at which you want that item to actually be listed on the blockchain. Here they create the market item, which is an item ID, the NFT contract, a token ID, and who is responsible to be paid within this transaction, which is whoever is listing the item uh, and the smart contract itself. And in fact, what you can see here is you have this marketplace contract interacting with the 721 contract. And this is how you interface with smart contracts uh, on from a smart contract is you get the template, which we actually imported at the top here with the 721. And once you import that in, you just assign the actual smart contract address connected to this template of functions. 
that's how you can start calling functions from it. So there it's going to transfer it from the sender into the smart contract itself. And the reason to do this is when you're actually transferring the assets, the original lister was not involved in the transaction. And so if the NFT was still owned by the seller, then you wouldn't actually be able to capture that from the 721. So the marketplace as a contract needs to own the asset in order for it to transfer it to any potential buyers. So that's a key thing to note here. We actually don't have a refund function, so it's really not that kosher as, as, a, as a function goes because now the second as I list it as a seller, the only way for me to actually get it back is to buy the asset from myself, which is kind of a weird concept. Otherwise, there's no way to actually refund yourself the, the smart contract, which is just interesting and, and odd. Um, I guess it's fine without any royalties, but otherwise you'd be getting royalties from yourself, which is a little weird. The, the second function then is from the buyer's perspective, I see an item that's listed, I wanna actually go purchase it. And I know the price of that item, which was actually defined when we created the market item. Uh, you, you passed in a price specifically for that. So here it's, it's just kind of given the contract and the ID, it's just pulling up that information and then just like before, now that the smart contract owns the NFT, it's then gonna go transfer that from the contract to the buyer because the buyer is the one that's interfacing with us now. And that's through that message.sender. And similarly, because this is a payable, we then also then can go ahead and take the money from the actual uh, buyer and transfer that over to the seller. And we have all of that information through this market item created uh, structure that, that we, we'd implemented. So of course, uh, as, as you would want to say, let's say I have royalties, right? To, to incentivize everything. None of this shows royalties, but because you're doing all of this movement of native currency, you can actually then take a percentage, right? And save that into the smart contract itself. And you can create admin accounts that would, could interface with the smart contract and pull that money out at any given point in time. So that's some functionality you need to add in there. And I, I should add as a general reminder that if you're adding any of this functionality, I definitely encourage you to write it, have it reviewed by multiple people, get it audited from a security standpoint, because once something goes live, then it's actually, you, you have no way of actually changing it. So if there's a bug, you're, you're going to be screwed basically <laughs> is, is the reality of it. So just make sure whenever you're deploying any smart contract, you, you fully understand what's going on at a very deep level. And it, it helps to have people actually audit things before, before things go live. So that's just one la layer deeper of how the smart contract works and, and how you consider using it. Hopefully you found this overview of the marketplace concept helpful. And I think it's a crucial part, generally speaking, of any player to earn game that you'd be looking to build. And I think it, it's definitely an exciting new way to earn revenue from the gaming ecosystem that I think we need a better tool for incentivizing developers that we, we don't have today in the current free to play market that really makes it problematic for indie developers. And I'm, I'm hoping tools like this and new business models and incentives can really revolutionize the whole kind of concept around gaming, which I think is really exciting. But I think I'll leave that here for now. So thanks so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. This has been Fuse Man and I'm signing out.